Hello and welcome to the second episode of our special series, Your Money in Pandemic Times, brought to you by Mirai Asset. This is a special broadcast where we will talk about how the coronavirus has disrupted the way we invest, how we can get the maximum from our money. Today we will discuss debt funds. Why debt mutual funds continue to be a good option and assessing the right credit is very important. How importance of credit quality and choosing the debt mutual fund are still a very good option. Today we have with us Mr. Mahindra Kumar Jadu, CIO Fixed Income at Mirai Asset Investment Managers. He has over 25 years of experience in the field of financial services. He is overall responsible for supervising all debt schemes of the Mirai Assets Mutual Fund. So Mr. Jadu, without any uh, delay, let's begin our special broadcast. First question to you is why are debt funds still a good option despite developments like the Franklin Templeton issue where six their open-ended debt funds were discontinued? Yeah, I, I think the debt funds continue to be a very attractive option, uh, notwithstanding one or two isolated incidents. In every market, there are always a few challenges. Like in equity markets, we see one or two stock collapse every now and then. So I don't think that one isolated incident should become the benchmark. And the reference point, the debt mutual funds historically have performed very well. Uh, if you look at the 25 year history of the mutual funds, much like the equity funds have given about 15% or so CAGR over the, that period, the debt funds have given between 8 and 8.5% return over the same period. Uh, for example, if you look at the guild funds right now, uh, the last five year return is close to 10%. So, I think it is the choice of the right fund which is more important and it is grossly unfair to broad press the whole debt funds in just because of one incident. Uh, it is a, I think uh, it's a well-known fact that uh, some of the funds have been uh, investing aggressively in high risk credits uh, in the sectors which were facing challenges like infrastructure, real estate or low rated NBFCs. And therefore, uh, I think the experts always knew that uh, uh, some of the funds carry extra risk. I think debt funds uh, continue to provide better returns than the bank foods deposits, which have traditionally been the first choice of the retail investors. Uh, the debt mutual funds offer over and above the returns, also the tax benefit because of the long term capital gain tax applicable. So I think it is high time to look beyond one or two isolated incidents and uh, understand that the high quality debt funds like guilt funds, uh, the dynamic bond funds provide uh, a very, very good option uh, to the debt investors. Moving on to the next question. I mean, it's very clear that uh, debt funds provide a better option than fixed deposits uh, equities, which you, as you said, give about 15% uh, return. But uh, how can an investor diversify his investment across various types of debt classes and refrain from a full allocation to credit fund category with high risk? Yeah, so uh, I think uh, the different asset classes have different risk characteristics and therefore also give different returns. So equity is a very, very volatile uh, asset class. Uh, so there is a well-established concept of asset allocation and portfolio diversification. Uh, no one wants to put all egg, all his eggs in one basket and therefore diversification is one of the key strategy for any successful investment on a long term basis. Now we know that the total investment in equities by the investors in India is just a tiny fraction of the total exposure to debt. So debt has its own utility in terms of giving uh, certainty and uh, higher reliability in terms of the long term return. Now. Uh, the issue, therefore, is not so much as to whether to invest in debt just because equity gives higher return, but how to invest in debt. And then, uh, like any other asset allocation model, the investor needs to look at two key factors. One is his investment horizon, which means for how long does he have the money. And the second is his risk appetite, which means how much volatility or how much drawdown, or in more simple language, how much loss he can afford to take on those investments. Debt mutual funds uh, come in various categories. So we start from the liquid fund, which invests in very short term securities of up to 91 day maturity. And then you have on the other spectrum, the bond funds or the guilt funds, which invest in very high quality debt papers like government bonds and AAA PSU bonds and very high rated private sector bonds. Uh, 
and then you have the creditors funds which invest in the low rated or low quality companies in hope of getting higher return now when you invest in debt instruments there are two potential sources two major potential sources of return one is the duration risk or the interest rate risk and the second is the credit risk now it's a very 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 fundamental aspect of money lending that if the money that you loan does not come back then all your return calculations gets invalidated now when you give money to the low rated companies they are less likely to return your capital in time along with interest than the highly rated uh, companies and therefore i think one is much better uh, protected by taking the volatility risk or the interest rate risk then to take the credit risk given the current situation where the corona virus crisis has impacted the economy in a very very uh, adverse way and there are concerns on the viability of a number of companies it is all the more important to focus on high quality of the portfolio because even if the interest rates go up for a while and it causes a temporary dip in the nav the historical experience will suggest that the interest rates are cyclical in nature and therefore when the market conditions improve um, the returns will come much like again in the equity markets where uh, as in when the market conditions improve the markets will move up but not necessarily all the stocks so typically the low quality stocks don't bounce back same thing happens in debt market which is why i think uh, the two key of, uh, success uh, uh, triggers for the debt investment is to stick to your investment horizon which means that the funds investment horizon should ideally match with the investor's investment horizon and the investor should only take that much risk uh, that he can afford to or he wants to so the problem that you referred to in the first question happened because uh, people thought they are investing in a bank fd like product where they'll get slightly higher return than the bank fd and at least that's the feedback we get but in the search of that fd like return Uh, the investment sometimes start happening like the banks and therefore uh, that mismatch happens so i think it is important to get a good advice from the respective investment advisor and match the investor's risk appetite and investment horizon with the debt fund and then i think every investor will end up with a very uh, happy experience investing in debt mutual funds some of why is understanding the various kind of risk related to Debt mutual funds important to help one gain better returns that align with your goals. I mean, how can one better understand the uh, kind of risks associated with these debt funds? Yeah, so there are uh, risks associated with every investment. Uh, there is no free lunch. So if the investor wants to earn higher return, then he has to take a certain risk. Now the investor's own profile uh, whether uh, in terms of his cash flows for example a salaried person will have some uh, inflows every month and then uh, after meeting his expenditure he will be saving something so he has a certain uh, you know risk profile and then someone who is at the age of 65 has a different risk profile than someone at the age of 25 so first it is important to understand the investor's own risk profile and then compare it with the investment to you know uh, target which is the debt mutual fund now as i said that in debt there are so many different types of risk primary two risks in investing in debt funds are of the interest rate risk or interest rate volatility risk and the other is the credit risk credit risk is permanent whereas the market risk is temporary so say for example if a company goes bankrupt then the possibility of the recovery of money from that company in future is very less but suppose if the nav of the investor dips because of the interest rates going up and because of the capital losses uh, that causes the nav to dip uh, as and when the interest rate cycle turns and interest rates again come down that recovery will happen so first and foremost uh, for the investors who uh, believe or who claim that they don't understand debt much it is very important to focus on high quality portfolio primarily comprising of the government bonds or triple a public sector undertakings so very high quality private sector bonds that by itself uh, will to a large extent ensure that there is no permanent damage to the portfolio's capital value 
then the investor will be left only with the residual risk of the volatility of the interest rate now to reduce the volatility of the interest rate that impacts the investor it is important to match the investor investment horizon to the funds investment horizon say for example if the investor has money only for the next one or two months or next three four months which he needs to use for some purpose for example he may be wanting to buy a car or he may be uh, you know accumulating cash to uh, pay his emis in which case he should not invest in long term fund because there can be volatility so he can choose the liquid funds which invest only in securities up to 91 days or in the low duration funds which invest in uh, securities up to one year duration so that his probability of losing is significantly reduced but on the other hand if the investor has money for the next 5 or 10 years and then if he keeps that money in the bank fixed deposits or in the liquid fund then he will forgive or uh, forgive uh, sorry not forgive uh, he will give up returns uh, which he can otherwise earn by having the time on his side so if he then invests in a bond fund it can potentially give him 8 to 9% return versus uh, the uh, 3 or 4% return that he will get in liquid fund currently or in the bank fixed deposit now that is a lot of difference uh, to the return and that can make a huge uh, difference to his terminal wealth at the end of his investment career so if the investor has short term money then he should invest in less volatile Uh, more conservative funds if he has long term money then he should invest in bond funds that is how the investor can maximize his benefit from investing in debt mutual funds while minimizing his risk profile okay so uh, to sum it up uh, debt funds have uh, definitely uh, many advantages like they uh, definitely mm-hmm. give more returns than fixed deposits which is one of the most popular ways of investing for people but uh, investors have to be very careful in choosing their debt funds and as mr jaju says that government funds uh, which are less risk should be looked at first before going into other higher risk funds so we'll sum up today's uh, session uh, with this mr jaju thank you so much for joining us thank you